Hello everyone, today we are going to be using our first hacking tool, which is called Nmap. So first we want to verify that Kali1 and our Mr. Robot machine is running. We want to make sure that they're both on the same network. So if we go to settings, network, NAT network, and we're in test one and allow all, awesome. We can go to Kali, just double checking. Awesome, so we're good to go. Now that we have both machines booted up, both on the same network, so now that we have both machines booted up, we have verified that they're both on the same network. Let's maximize our Kali Linux machine and minimize our Mr. Robot machine. And we want to open up terminal. So we're going to go about the scenario as, as if we're an attacker coming in, just plugging into the network and we want to attack this machine. So because of that, we want to open up terminal and we want to type in if config. As soon as we're plugged into the network, we're going to be given an IP address. So oops, sudo if config. Type in Kali for our password. Let's just do that one more time. sudo if config. Awesome. So now we get, as soon as we're plugged in, we get an IP address on ETH0, which is 10.0.2.15 with a net mask of 255.255.255.255. So what this tells us is that there's a mathematical formula behind all this. But essentially, the lowest IP address within our network that we're currently plugged into is 10.0.2.0 and goes all the way up to 255, similar as to right here. So because we know that, we want to start scanning everything in this network. But that can be quite tricky with Nmap. So to start Nmap, we can type in Nmap, tag H. And what the TAC H flag does is just give us a whole bunch of information about Nmap, all the flags and what they do, so we can become advanced scanners. But we don't really need that right now. We just want to use a regular fast scan with Nmap. So we want to, to scan an IP range, we want to type in Nmap, and then an IP address, which is our target IP address. I forgot our IP address. sudo if config. So we want to type in Nmap. 10.0.2.0, which is our lowest IP address. And to represent a range, we want to type in slash 24, which is equivalent of this net mask, of this net mask, which will be equivalent of the dot zero all the way to a dot 255, which is 255 IP addresses. That's what the slash 24 address represents. There are multiple different types of slashes, such as slash 22 representing a range of 1,024 IP addresses, a slash 23 representing 512 IP addresses, a slash 24 representing 256, slash 25 representing 128, and so on and so on. So, but we don't want to do a regular scan, we want to do a fast scan, because every single computer has 65,000, around 65,000 open ports. It can take a long time to scan all 65,000 ports on top of scanning uh, over 200 IP addresses. So the TAC F will just scan the top 100 most vulnerable ports. So if we go ahead and kick off this scan, oops, and map TAC F 10.0.2.0. slash 24 and map. And what this does is Nmap will start sending out data to all these IP addresses. And based on every single port, which you can think of as equivalent as a doorway onto, into a computer, a program will open up a port on a computer to connect to the internet or other computers or just to be used for some service. So because one IP address is given to one computer, we can assume that there are over 200 computers within this network, possible computers. The TACF will, will only scan the top 100 most vulnerable ports, giving us uh, a list of machines that are quite easy to hack. So this is the output, and we see 10.0.2.1, which is most likely reserved for the router in most scenarios. That's just how computers work. So we can go ahead and skip this one, and then we see 10.0.2.4. And because we see multiple ports open, we can assume that this is the Mr. Robot machine. We also scan 10.0.2.15, which is our own Kali Linux machine, and all ports are closed because we have no current um, programs running. So what an attacker does is that he goes ahead, goes ahead and attacks every single type of these ports by understanding what's going on behind the port, what the program is doing, and starts sending out exploits. So this is what we're going to be learning, how to analyze and how to attack every single type of service. So 
First of all, we want some more information, so let's do another nmap scan. nmap tag lowercase s capital V, which will give us version number for every single service that's running behind a port. And you can think of service as just a type of application. So if we do tag sv, and this time we just want to scan only that IP address. So let's also add a tag v. And what a tag v does is just make the verbose, makes the nmap scan verbose. So we can go ahead and type press enter. And this time you can see that instead of scanning the top 100 ports, we're scanning the top 1000 ports, which is the default number of ports that nmap will scan. We can change this to scan all 65,000 ports, but this scan will take a long time. So it should just take a few more minutes. Awesome. So now we see much more information here. We see an actual, another columns called version. And we see that on port 80, the state is open using HTTP and the version number is Apache. So we know that Apache, for those of us who aren't in the professional industry right now, Apache is a type of web server that runs websites and we can connect to it by using HTTP on port 80. So to start off by attacking this, all we want to do is go to the top left corner. Specifically for web servers, we want to go about it using this way. For every single type of service and port number, there's a unique way of identifying the attack path to it. So specifically for port 80, port 443, or anything relating to HTTP, we can go ahead and start off with this. We can go to the top right, type in Firefox, and we can open up a web browser. It doesn't matter which web browser, we just want to access the website right now. We can go ahead and close this. Sorry about all this default stuff. So what we can do to access port 80 on this IP address is we, we can just take this IP address and we can just type it in. 10.0.2.4. So typically web servers will have a domain name associated with it, such as google.com. But if you type in google.com's actual IP address, you will be directed to the Google web page. So both google.com and the Google's IP address will direct you to the web page. In this case, we don't have a domain name currently. We just have an IP address. So let's go ahead and connect on port 80. And we can see all this information starting to run. So it looks like we're going down the right path for the, for the Mr. Robot machine. So what we can also do is to connect over port 443. So we can type in HTTPS because we see that HTTP is being used with SSL. And what SSL means is that it'll provide a secure encrypted connection. And to do that, we can just type in S at the beginning because just typing in an IP address into the browser, well, we will default to port 80. So we can just type in HTTPS, press enter, and it looks like we're back here. Sometimes you may see a warning screen. I may have already accepted the certificate. You can go to the bottom and click advance and then continue on. And that will allow you to get to the exact same web page here. Awesome. So now that we know the basics of accessing web servers, then in our next videos, we're going to start enumerating more information and see what we can attack. Thank you for listening.